The word police normally evokes what is known as the petty police, the truncheon blows of the forces of law, and the order and inquisitions of the secret police, but this narrow definition may be deemed contingent. In this video, I'm going to outline Rancière's idiosyncratic conception of both the police and of politics, and much like my first video on Le Partage du Sensible, use a number of examples to outline how these concepts are central to Rancière's system of thought. As a follow-up in a second part of this video, I shall cover some of the secondary literature and debates over Rancière's notions of the police and politics, by comparing the anarchist-inspired reading of Todd May and the opposing democratic view of Samuel Chambers. So, when one imagines the police, as Rancière himself posits, we conjure up a largely imagistic, physical representation of force, power and authority. The historical figure of a weapon-wielding male dressed in the garments of oppression usually comes to mind. Yet this simplistic notion of police and police control has long been questioned by many parts of the left, and Rancière's view can be seen as an extension of this outlook. David Graeber, the American anarchist and anthropologist, in his work The Utopia of Rules, writes that Generations of police sociologists have pointed out that only a very small proportion of what police actually do has anything to do with enforcing criminal law, or with criminal matters of any kind. Most of it has to do with regulations, or, to put it slightly more technically, with the scientific application of physical force, or the threat of physical force, to aid in the resolution of administrative problems. And thus he very bluntly writes, so, the police are bureaucrats with weapons. It's thus seemingly accepted on the left that the police are part of a far broader system of social control and legal normalisation than just criminal control. Rather than just punishing and seeking out criminals, the police have a central role in ensuring order, shape and conformity within society. Rancière's theory of the police would not only contain this outlook, but openly takes from that of Michel Foucault, the 20th century French philosopher and theorist, as he pushes an understanding of the police into something far more totalising and broad. As Foucault states, since the 18th century, the police have been a formidable institution of social regulation, perpetual surveillance, and part of the constant corrections of the behaviour of the people, and thus not an institution of justice, but of normalisation. However, again, Rancière moves beyond this assessment of the police. Rancière writes that the police is thus first an order of bodies that defines the allocation of ways of doing, ways of being, and ways of saying, and sees that those bodies are assigned by name into a particular place and task. The police order is thus the social thing which determines the identities, roles and potential lives for all people within a particular society. Rancière himself gives the example of this. It is police law, for example, that traditionally turns the workplace into a private space not regulated by the ways of seeing and saying proper to what is called the public domain, where the workers having a part is strictly defined by the remuneration of work. Basically, Rancière sees the police not as just the body which might punish striking workers or react to those who would revolt from their impoverished places in the worksite, but as the very social order which means that workers' demands for rights, voices and power, or a part, in the workplace can never be heard or recognised as legitimate. The police order immediately excludes them from any of these rights, as they are not seen in terms of anything apart from their labour. All of these ideas are established in the chapter Wrong, Politics and Police in his excellent 1997 work Disagreement, so I suggest reading through this as it's actually quite easily found online and luckily Rancière's writing is particularly lucid. However, I'll give some further examples to really explain what the police order is. Firstly, one element of the patriarchy might be understood in terms of Rancière's police order. The limitation of women into the private sphere and having of roles as housewives throughout history is not just through men physically forcing or policing women into these roles, but through a broader police order, which excludes female identities from certain spaces, ignores their voices and refuses them as real political subjects. Such a view is in line with various theories of female oppression. For example, Betty Friedan's claim that the feminine mystique has succeeded in burying millions of American women alive seems to come in line with Rancière's notion of the police order, as it is the perception and notion of a woman's identity which directly relates to how a role in life can be understood by the dominant social order. Furthermore, the more revolutionary views of Abdullah Öcalan, the Kurdish theorist and revolutionary figure, 
claims that all slavery is based on housewiversization. These views mirror Rancière's own idea that the police ordering of society and the designation of female roles as caregiver, mother, homemaker, sexual object and the limitation of their voice from the public sphere into the private home space constitutes the domination of women throughout history. Secondly, we might understand the plight of the Palestinian people in terms of the police order, as there is a limitation of native bodies to particular zones and regions within the Palestinian territory. Similarly, the Israeli ideological warfare against the colonised people can be understood in terms of the police order. As Ilan Pape provocatively claims, when an Israeli soldier sees a Palestinian baby, he does not see an infant, he sees the enemy. Rancière's notion of the police order thus offers a key insight into understanding the nature of oppression, control and dehumanisation when it occurs in colonial situations. It seems that the perception of identities and roles, which are determined by the dominant police order, lie at the heart of many forms of domination. The police order might be used to clarify the nature of the patriarchy or colonial situations, but is more than just a simple descriptive tool used for denouncing unjust and brutal hierarchies. Firstly, as Samuel Chambers stresses in his reading of Rancière, the police order is clearly not a derogatory term. There can be better and worse police orders, and thus to simply describe a society as constituted by a police order is not necessarily a damning assault on its institutions or history. Ultimately, whether the police is sweet or kind does not make it any less the opposite of politics. Despite the ascendancy of right-wing authoritarianism in the West, under the guise of nationalist isolationism, America, France and the UK offer far safer places to live for women, minority groups, LGBT people than many places across the world. Secondly, the police order is one of the police, with such connotations of administration and bureaucracy particularly apt, because it is an order which attempts to give an account of every single identity and body within society. As Chambers writes, the police potage is thus not just any potage, but one that tries to account for all within it and excludes the possibility of, of any supplement. The police order thus limits and distributes roles and identities to all within society and allows no supplemental or distinct outside identities to exist. So, hopefully the concept of the police order has been sufficiently outlined, as how the dominant social order sees not only the properties of particular identities, whether racial, sexual or gendered, but their potential lives and actions. If so, then Rancière's concept of the political is extremely simple. So here are two key quotes from his work, Disagreement, which outline what Rancière considers politics. It is equally important to say that nothing is political in itself, merely because power relationships are a work within it. For a thing to be political, it must give rise to the meeting of police logic and egalitarian logic that is never set up in advance. This first quote undermines the common conception of politics that has been embraced by many on the left, that any site of power or hierarchy can be understood as political. Thus, the second wave feminist slogan of the private is political might be contested under Rancière's view. Not because he sees the oppression of women in the, in the private sphere as unimportant, but as his view of politics is extremely specific. This second quote hopefully outlines what he means further. Politics occurs when there is a place and a way for two heterogeneous processes to meet. The first is the police process, in the sense we have tried to define, and the second is the process of equality. As you can see, equality is crucial to the concept of politics, and I'll cover that in greater depth in another video. But roughly, Rancière is arguing that, quite simply, politics occurs whenever there is a rupture in the police order. When an event occurs which breaks the distributions of particular identities within the police order, this act can be considered as genuinely political. And this always occurs on the basis of equality, in which the natural inequalities and injustices that are presumed to be innate, common sense or traditional in any particular police order are revealed to actually be artificial and lacking natural foundation. Politics is the arrival of a new group into the police order, but not just through the police order creating them and distributing to them particular identities, but through the brute power of new, once excluded figures, revealing that they really do exist and are equal to everyone else in society. They show that the logic of the police, that is the logic and outlook of inequality in hierarchy, can be countered by an opposed logic of equality. So here are a few examples of how these situations might actually arise. Throughout history, the most memorable, although perhaps overly fetishised, movements of revolutionary political action have been the appearance of new identities and spaces and sites they are once excluded from, and the growth of new voices of the masses who have normally been ignored. 
although I've used this example previously in my first video. Todd May's account of the civil rights movement and the student sit-in demonstrations of the 1960s are very clear for outlining how politics can undermine the police order. So, this is the scenario. Four black students walk into a Woolworth store and lunch service in Greensboro, Mississippi, and make orders for lunch. They are not served, and the black waitress even berates them for their provocative actions. Furthermore, they were not even explicitly asking for any government response or different treatment. They were simply making it an act, and ultimately this means that Rancière would consider such an act to be a rare act of the political. First, as May writes, to act in this way at this time, to presuppose one's equality as an African-American, was, of course, a dissensus from the police order. In that order, African-Americans were allotted a place that made them clearly unequal to whites. They were now in a space meant only for white people, engaged in an activity meant only for white people, and using their speech in a new way. Secondly, they were acting out their presupposition of equality with white people. They acted as if they were already equal with white people, and undermined the exclusion of white institutions. They did not appeal to the government to change the laws for them, and then come and sit down. Rather, through the very act of sitting down in the lunch counters, they revealed that such laws were not natural or necessary, but completely arbitrary, because they were in fact equal with the white people they were now sitting next to. For a further example, the far larger political events of April 27th, 1989 might be applied. Thousands of Chinese students and workers marched into Tiananmen Square. They were met with intense police resistance, but managed to break the police line and enter into the square. There was limited violence, but 500 troops were sent there by the government. These can be considered truly political in their nature, as the real importance of this act lies in the fact that the students, with support and protection from workers, voiced not only concerns from themselves, but all of wider society. They gave speech to those who could not speak in fear of repression. They ruptured the control and order of the authoritarian state, which had once firmly designated all citizens to roles in society. The permanent opposition of politics and police is hopefully evident. As Rancière writes, the essence of politics is dissensus. However, Rancière's own writings on this topic do leave it rather vague, and ultimately, they can't give too great a guide on how the revolutionary left, or any progressive political movement, might utilise rare events of dissensus to actually cause long-term change. All of the protests that I've mentioned have come with substantial political and legal movements behind them, wishing to pursue policy changes and transform wider government to improve the lives of the people they represent. If we're to understand these singular protests as the crux of their movements, it'd be highly anachronistic and inaccurate. The most consistent criticism against Rancière's account of politics is how it is not a useful guide for political actions in the 21st century. In line with Slavoj Žižek's consistent reflection throughout 2017, the left's fascination with almost masturbatory protests cannot really handle future beyond acts of dissent. If we are to be concerned only with singular acts of dissensus against the police order in terms of perception of identities, then it seems there is a real limiting to the potential for change. Although the concept of the police and the police order do give a really interesting ontology and account of politics in wider society, and break from the traditional views of how we might understand the police. Hopefully in the second part to my video, I'm going to cover some secondary literature and the reading of Rancière's ideas, which try to flesh them out further and give them greater potential.